what uh, in the matter of title uh, for this message is the prelude to the realization of the covenant. A prelude to the realization of the covenant. Now, as you read through chapter 17, you'll see, well, is God making another covenant with Abram? Abram? No. Not exactly. Uh, Genesis 15, uh, it speaks of the promises given. Okay? And you could go to 12 and 13, 14. The promises are given. They're expanded. They're expounded upon. Uh, reiterated, reiterated. Spoken again. Okay? And in chapter 17, we're going to come to the promises are going to be realized. Now think of this for a minute. In order for faith to be exercised, promises must be given. You know, we know the verse that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the first thing in this matter of the covenant, God gives Abram promises. And as we uh, think about these promises, or as we meditate and as we hold dear to the promises, all the promises of God in the, in the, in the Holy Word of God, you see, uh, Faith must be exercised, and as we exercise that faith, it's going to be seen in obedience, it's going to be seen in faithfulness, and yes, it's going to be seen in waiting on God. Even like uh, Abram, he says, or Abram in chapter 4 of Romans, uh, uh, hoping against hope. You see, there's faith and hope. They go hand in hand. But see, as we come in chapter 17, we're seeing this, the time for the promise to be fulfilled. You see, promises given, yes, that's in Genesis 15, 13, 12, all that. And, but in Genesis 17, we're going to have the beginning of the realization of the promises are going to come to pass. Now, uh, and this, basically, when we speak of the seed promise, now, um, we can look at a double fulfillment, we understand, uh, according to Galatians, uh, the Apostle Paul speaks of the Lord Jesus as the seed. You know, he is the Messiah. This is, this is all pointing towards him. But also, let's not eliminate the national descendants or natural descendants of Abraham. Uh, so, uh, time for the promise to be fulfilled. There's going to be an Isaac, okay? Now, in chapter 17, verse 1, we see uh, the Lord here, Abram, uh, appearing to Abram, okay? And uh, we talked about 13 years, or 13 wasted years, or 13 years of silence. And I was thinking about that, and I was, uh, I, I, this one verse in Proverbs says this, Proverbs 13, 12. And I think we could relate to it if you think about how we uh, long to see our loved ones saved, we long to see growth in holiness, we long to see revival, we, we long, it says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. That's Proverbs 13, 12. Isn't that true? Now think of this. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Some of us here are sick. Not of uh, physically or a disease, but we, we have heartaches, or, or you know, we're, we want our loved ones to be saved. We want, uh, we want to grow in grace, and we look in the mirror and we say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't grown too much in the Lord," and so we're waiting on God. The Lord, continue to do the work. You know, we want to, we want to get to heaven. We want to be perfect. So hope deferred make it the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Amen. Think of that. When God, you know, answers that promise. See, he opens that door. He provides for that need. And you, you're just, wow, this is great. You see, God allowed Abram and Sarah uh, in these 13 years, God allowed Abram and uh, Sarah's body, in a sense, to wither. Okay? But I think as we look at plan A, B, and C, uh, you see, what we see here is really Abram is fainting. He's fainting. He's succumbing to human needs, human efforts. You see, it, there's this idea of self-reliance and self-achievement or the ways of the flesh. You see, he, in a sense, you know, think about this. When, when, when hope is deferred and maketh the heart sick, sometimes we, have, we get busy with other things, right? 
not so urgent in prayer anymore because, you know, Lord, I've been praying the same prayer. I've been asking the same things. When, Lord? When, Lord? And so, you know, see, it's, just, it's like, like Paul says to Timothy, it's stirring up the gift of God, stirring up that, stirring it up. You know, uh, revive, ref personal. And, uh, you know, the Lord does that, uh, you know, for, for me through, through the scriptures and for you through the scriptures. But you see, I believe Abram is fainting. He's finding his enjoyment in Ishmael. You know, uh, I, I can settle for second best. You know, it's pretty close. I can get some enjoyment, some pleasure, some consolation, some comfort. But you see, here, after 13 years, God appears to Abram. And that's, that's so great, isn't it? God doesn't leave him alone. God doesn't leave us alone. And, and this appearing is interesting. Uh, we find in chapter 17, I'll just give you a, a couple of thoughts here on that. As God appears, God is talking to Abram. It is some kind of appearance or vision. If you look there in verse 22, uh, Nosa says, And he left off talk, talking with him, and God went up from Abram. And so the idea is maybe it's like, uh, you think of back of uh, Manoah, I think the birth of Samson. You know, when the Lord uh, took his, or received his offering, and he went up into the, into the gloriously over the, over the altar, you know, somehow. But see, God has appeared to him. Notice here, first of all, uh, there's two parts here. First of all, the revelation. God is going to reveal himself. God is going to reveal himself. Now, it says there in verse 1, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and, and be thou perfect. Now, this idea of God revealing himself is very important, and we've stressed that in the past. And so I'm not going to go there again, but you see, all, all the way from Genesis 12, when God called uh, Abram to himself and made the covenant. Uh, there have been times when God has broken in and revealed himself and his promises and his words and his attributes and his deliverance, all that. And we would expect that of our God. Okay? Now, we have mentioned already Al Almighty God, the Almighty God, that's Al Shaddai. Uh, one man says it this way. I like it. Think of why, you see, God, and we said it last week also, when God reveals himself to the seven churches, there's a particular need for each church. God knows exactly what we need as a church. Okay? And, but see, God knows exactly what Abram needs. And so in this revelation of Al Shaddai, one man says, the God who compels nature to do what is contrary to itself and subdues it to bow and minister to grace. Let me give it to you again. Al Shaddai, in his estimation, is this. The God who compels nature to do what is contrary to itself and subdues it to bow and minister to grace. To grace. You see, whenever the Lord says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the, the, the good shepherd. I am, I am. You see, he is revealing himself in, in a very special way. Okay? You see, the Lord Jesus, in his days, could control, for example, all of creation. He could control and heal the sick. He could raise the dead. He could cast out demons. He could, could forgive sins. Like we were reading there in in Mark chapter 8 and 9, about who, who is this one that can forgive sins on earth? But you see, uh, as Al Shaddai, as our God, he has power to, he has power over the barren womb. He has power over Abram's reproductive organs. You see, this is the whole idea of those 13 years. Not the whole idea, but part of the 13 years where, where Abram and Sarah come to the end of their rope. They can't do anything physically. It's almost like, you know, Hannah for Samuel. You see, she came to the point when she said, God, you take my son, you, you use him. And when he, she got to that point, God says, okay, it's time I'm going to open up your womb. I'm going to give you a son. And you're going to give me Samuel. And Samuel is going to be a, a priest after my own heart. A man after my own heart. You see, 
get to connection. God reveals himself. And when he reveals himself, especially to Abram, and to us too, okay, there's a particular reason. There's a reason. God wants to teach us something. He wants us to know about him. And, and, and he wants us to see that, that he is sufficient for that need. Okay? I, I, like, the, I like when the Lord says, I am I'm the possessor of heaven and earth. Back there in chapter 15, and Abram got on to that man. He got on to that. He says, you know, to, to the king of Sodom, no, 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 my God is the possessor of heaven and earth. You know, then, then he says, I am your, your, what, your, your shield and your exceeding great reward, Abram. Abram got on to that. Think of that, how God does that for you. As you open up the scriptures, and Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the Alpha and the Omega. See, that's when God Holy Spirit illuminates and takes the scriptures, and I believe uh, that is so important. God's still doing that today. But see, uh, the revelation is Al Shaddai, and uh, different meanings for that. Almighty, all-powerful, all sufficient, all sufficient power to perform what he has promised. Get a hold of that. You see, Jehovah, whenever we see uh, Lord capitalized in the King James, okay, it's Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahweh, usually it's Jehovah, okay. But see, when we see that, uh, we, we see that God is a covenant keeping God. I mean, he keeps promises. He makes promises. He keeps promises. He makes unconditional covenants with, with people like Abraham. And we say, well, that is so great, isn't it? Because does, does God have to promise anything to us? No. No. He doesn't have to promise his grace. He doesn't have to promise his Savior. He doesn't have to promise us heaven. He doesn't have to promise anything because we don't deserve a thing. The damnation, hell, eternal torment. Because we are sinners. But this morning we're saved by his grace. And he's given us all the promises in Christ Jesus, what Paul says, are yea and amen. But you see, Jehovah, covenant God, God that keeps promises, that God that makes promises, and dear ones, to Abram, maybe, you know, um, God is seeing here now, it's time to reveal himself in a different way. I'll shout it. I'll shout it. You see, what good... You know, little ones, listen, your parents make a promise to you. What good if they can't come through with the promise? Does that make it that they're liars? No. There's a lot of things we promise our children and we'd like to do for them. We fall short in so many ways. But you see, may that our intentions be true and right, and if possible, Lord willing. But see, uh, that's not the way God does it. You see, God is Jehovah God. He's the covenant-keeping God. But he's also revealing himself here to Abram as the Al Shaddai, the one who is able to keep his covenant. You see, we need a God, not only who is gracious, who will promise us grace, but he's able to give us grace and minister grace and bring us grace. And, and we're, in, you know, right here today, okay? Look in, for a minute in the New Testament. I want to show you uh, this concept or this idea of, uh, uh, of Jehovah and El Shaddai. Look at Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. Ephesians 1, verse 4 says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame, for him in love, having predestinated us, uh, us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now we read that and we say, Amen. What a promise. Man. Uh, eternal predestination, God's purposes, not only uh, save us to make us holy, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. We're children. We're, we're, we're uh, adult children this morning. We're, we're believer priests. We're, we're royal priests. You know, all we, what we are, our position, what God says we are, okay? That's Jehovah. That's a promise. That's God appearing as, in the sense of Jehovah God, okay? But look at Ephesians 1.11. Look at Ephesians 1.11. 
In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now we get we get lost maybe sometimes. Well, God, God is sovereign. God is working out everything according. But notice here, if God promised to give you an inheritance, God is well able. He's almighty. He's all sufficient to bring that inheritance, that grace, on a daily basis, moment by moment. See, that's the, what the verse is saying. In whom we have have a, obtained an inheritance. Wow, that's great. Right? Not just heaven. We have an inheritance. We're, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. All that God the Father wants to give to us, He's going to give to us through the Lord Jesus. He, he earned it. He merited it. He bought it for us. But you see, it's like, you know, you know going to the, and somebody says, well, you know, I, I put a million bucks in your... Uh, <laughs> that happened the other day. I was talking to the bank. Lent clerk, a little bit clerk too much. And she said, Tom, I just put $3 million into your bank account. <laughs> she, she fixed it fast. I say, praise the Lord, I don't want $3 million bucks. Okay? Well, what if someone gave you $3 million bucks? But see, he didn't give you the debit card. He didn't give you any means to, to take it out. Well, what's, worth, what's, what's the $3 million worth? Really nothing, right? More like an aggravation, right? More like disappointment, right? You know, I go to the bank and I, I still can't get the money out. That's not the way God works. You see, He's Jehovah God. He promises and He's Al Shaddai, God Almighty. And He's able to bring that inheritance. Those promises. He can make the promises come true. Look at Abram's case for a minute. Uh, Romans 4.17, we, we mentioned that, we read that in our scripture reading. But I want you to think about that verse. Because really, it, it says so much. Romans 4.17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. And we say, that, well, there's the promise, okay? Before him, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which he which be not as though they were. Wow. God promised as Jehovah, okay, I'm going to make you a great nation, Abram. You're going to be personal blessings and national blessings, you know, the seed, the blessing, the land, and, and through uh, Abram, uh, you know, all the nations are going to be blessed. We, we talk about the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, okay? But notice the principle there. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. See, that's how God works. God says, you're a child of God. God says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He says, I, you have been redeemed, and now you have an inheritance. You have God, Holy Spirit, who has sealed you. And you kind of say, well, oh, that's great doctrine. But where's the reality of it? It's there. It's there. Okay, as you what? Faithfully obey. Faithfully trust God. Faithfully wait on God. You see, God quickened Abram's body. That was Al Shaddai. That was God Almighty. Who quickened the dead. You see, the result is that God called those things which be not as though they were. Abram, you're going to be, you're going to be a father of, of a great nation. Many. Many seed, many multitudes of seed and descendants. Sarah, you're going to be the mother of many nations. You see, and, and they're looking at each other. Who, us? Come on. I, I'm, I'm 99, 100 years old. God, don't you see? I, it's impossible. It, great promise. I mean, really good promise, God. But God says, that's not all, Abraham. What I say and what I say will come to pass. Okay. Calleth those things which be not as though they were. And so this revelation of God is, is, uh, is so important here in Genesis 17. It's exactly what Abram needs. Do you see that? It's not, again, uh, not to belabor the point. It's not, Abram doesn't need to see God as the Jehovah God. He, sees, he needs to see him now in a new way as Al Shaddai, God Almighty. Because, you see, God has promised, but now God is going to what? Fulfill his promises. There's going to be a realization of, of the 
covenant promises. Now, we think for a minute, what is left? Well, quickly, turn to, to Romans 4. We, we just read one verse, but notice, remember I said, uh, you know, first there must be promises. And the scriptures are filled with promises. And what do we do? We have to make them ours, right? We have to apply them to ourselves. We have to believe them. We have to trust them. We have to bring them before God and say, Father, you promised. Well, you know, I'm talking about my child. Dad, you promised. You promised. Dad, you promised. You got to keep your word, right? Well, God keeps his word. And so, uh, God promised, and now God is going to perform. He's going to, uh, Almighty, he, you know, again, uh, Ab uh, Abram's uh, inability to have children, Sarah's womb, barren. That, that's no problem with El Shaddai, the all sufficient, all powerful God. And so, look at Romans 4. Verse 18. This is what left. You see, our response, or Abram's response, is faith. You see, we, we came, uh, about a year or two, a year ago, so, you know, in Romans chapter 4, we looked at Abram's faith here, and we said, wow, that's not me. I, I don't have that strong faith. And we said, well, there had to have been something, you know, let's, let's look at Abram and, and see his life of faith. And so we've gone through six tests and we've seen his faith has been tried and tried. He's passed, he's failed, he's tried and all that. And you see, actually, his faith is growing, isn't it? But see, the key point is not Abram's faith. The key point is God's revelation. Because without, it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, how big is your God this morning? Well, see, once Abram fell on his face and realized, this is our shadow. This is the all God Almighty. Not just the Creator. His God. Who promised. Look what it says there. In Romans 4 verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded, notice that, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. You see, Jehovah promised Al Shaddai is able to perform. When the Lord Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. You see, when he says, I am the bread of heaven. I am whatever we need. The Lord Jesus will fulfill infinitely. But see, he says, as your faith, so it shall be. As you have believed, so it shall be. You see, our, our God works on the, on the principle of faith. We have to believe him. We have to trust him. And part of that waiting, is part of that trust is waiting. Waiting for the realization of the promises. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. God revealed himself to Abram as Ashana. Let's go quickly here. What God requires, look at Genesis chapter 17. Chapter 17, verse 1. You see, when God reveals Himself in a new way, you know, it's like this. When God gives you a promise, it's okay to put it on your refrigerator. It's okay to put it on your, you know, computer monitor. It's okay to memorize it, right? But is that enough? What is God expecting? He's expecting you to walk by faith. He's expecting you to obey. You see, you've got to walk in the light as He's in the light. You see, when God gives you more light, and especially when He reveals Himself more, and all the promises in the Word of God are part of that, okay? I learned something new about the Lord Jesus today, okay? How am I going to apply it in my life? How am I going to walk by faith? How am I going to obey it? How am I going to try? You see, God doesn't give us anything that's just, you know, that he, he, he's going to use it for our good, 
for our growth, to build us up. Why? To try us, to prepare us for the next test. Okay? So in verse uh, 1, he says uh, what God requires. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So the Lord says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Well, we can say for 13 years, Abram was not really walking in the light as he was in the light, right? We, we talked about that. That's why they're called wasted years. And uh, we can think of uh, Abram was sidetracked. Ever been sidetracked? Ever been preoccupied? He was preoccupied by Ishmael. In a way, God's promise was, was maybe it wasn't for God. Maybe we'll give Abram that benefit of the doubt. But uh, the promises were not, you know, there before the forefront in his eyes anymore. They were on the back burner in a sense, you know. He was enjoying Ishmael. Uh, there was a, you know, and, and so we, we see that in Abram. But see, when we come with this idea, walk before me and be thou perfect, and what God requires, we see that one is justified by faith, and with that comes imputed righteousness. See, we're believing the promises of God uh, by faith alone. See, that's Jehovah God, okay? But you see, there, there is an aspect of enjoyment of the promises. That's what Abraham is starting, the realization of the promises. You see, uh, how, are, how do we enjoy the, the covenant, the new covenant? Well, there has to be what? Sanctification. There has to be personal holiness. I mean, not only, uh, first of all, for your own conscience, right? You, can you sin, dear Christian? Be out of fellowship with, with the Lord and, and progress in holiness, purity, righteousness? Can you be used of God? No. You see here, where our own conscience, you know, says, well, the Holy Spirit is grieved. I grieved Him. Why? Because there's sin, unconfessed sin. Or there's habits, or the things that I'm doing, allowing, or not doing, you know, all that. You see, I, I'm not enjoying joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah? And so, so, Abram, you know, what does God require? Well, in order to enjoy the covenant, there has to be sanctification, there has to be pure personal holiness, righteousness, obedience. Uh, one man says, uh, maintaining and confirming confirmation of the covenant. Simple as that. You know, it's not, uh, now, now remember, it's, uh, like one man said, it's so good, uh, I don't know if it was who it was, but you get the point of this, you see. You see, uh, the apple comes first, and then the, the fruit, right? Uh, an apple doesn't make an apple tree, does it? We should know that, right, Tim? This morning, right? After its own kind? See, the apple tree, you see, the apple doesn't make the apple tree. The apple tree bears apples. And so, when we talk about, uh, walk before me and be thou perfect, well, I'm going to earn my salvation. No, no. Remember, you have salvation. God has promised you. It's an unconditional covenant. Now, Al Shaddai says, okay, I'm going to, uh, this is what God requires of you. See, you know, when God says to the man, stretch out your, your withered hand, or when he said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth, you scratch your head and say, well, how can they do that? How can a sinner repent? How can I do anything? This grace, this power of the Holy Spirit, what do I have to do? I have to believe. To trust. I have to obey. I have to walk perfectly, it says. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, uh, walk before me. Think of that for a minute. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was not. I come to the garden alone. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. You see, there is this personal God consciousness in our life. It's his presence. You see, when we look at Abram, we see we see God's presence or God's blessing. You see, Abram was content to be in a tent. And that speaks of separation from the world. He was a pilgrim and stranger. 
Uh, he's in the world, but not of the world. He, 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 he had altars, okay? A worshiper of God, not an idolater, but a true worshiper of God. His, uh, how God had revealed it, okay? There's prayer. He called upon the name of the Lord. That's communion, fellowship. That's worship, you see? He says, walk before me. <coughs> and dear ones, listen, we have such a greater, infinite more concept, realization today, this morning, don't we? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know that, that where, you know, God Holy Spirit is in you, He dwells in you, He sealed you, and that wherever you go, God Holy Spirit, God is with you? God is never leaving you or not forsaking you? God Holy Spirit is always 24-7. In your best moments, in your worst moments. Wherever. In the fire, out of the fire. God, Holy Spirit, is with you, in you. And uh, that is how God the Father, and the Spirit of Christ, God the Father, God the Son, manifests themselves to us. And, and so he says, I walk before me. I think we need to think about that. Not just... Uh, you know, you know, we, we, we can always think of the negative, right? You know, I, God's going to catch me doing this. God's going to catch me doing that. God's going to catch me. No, no. The, you know, we, we know better than that, right? Hopefully. Some Christians don't know that, or they, they say they're Christians, and uh, they're, they're bogged down in legalism, all this sort of stuff. But no, no, we're, we're saying, well, in the fire, in the trial, in the testings, in, in the diseases, in, in, the, in the accidents, it's, you know, everything's God. God is here. I don't have to run to a church, synagogue. I don't have to go to the Pope. I can, I can go to the Lord Jesus. I can go to my Heavenly Father. He's right here. He's a word away. Wow. And I think that's, again, uh, we, we say Abram wasn't doing a very good job, okay? And so, but notice, again, God's initiative. Uh, you know, we can think of the disciples so many times. Dull, uh, uh, dumb, uh, unaware, insensitive and, and the Lord is what he's going back to them time and time again I was reading this morning you know Peter 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 you're going to deny me three times and Peter said no Lord I'll never deny you we got done he wept the city says it says the Lord has appeared unto Peter you see the Lord knows you see the best thing is here as we think about the realization of the promises in this is that he says, walk before me. But also he says, be thou perfect. And the margin says, upright and sincere. And uh, again, the idea is that we're not earning our salvation. It's all grace. It's all promise. But you see, uh, there, there has to be, you see, the trying of our faith. It has to be obedient faith. And we're going to have to, you know, we're, we're out to be made like the Lord Jesus. And so he's going to try us and test us and all these things. But you see, be thou perfect, uh, upright, sincere, the margin says. Be faithful in observance of all duties. The means of grace, you know, you know, you know, general Christianity, you know, I don't, I don't know about, uh, We think about average Christianity today. What what is expected from the Christian, or what what passes off as Christianity? We're subnormal, or we we're faced with subnormal uh, standards, right? Uh, this Christian is you know this person, and you know uh, well you don't have to be holy, you don't have to be you don't have to repent, you don't have to have conversion, all all, all those things you know if you live in the world, all those things you know see. But no no, uh, God says be thou perfect, okay, faithful. Functional. With God, a soldier. That's what God has called us to do. Perfect, complete, and sound. You see, grace brings Abram to the blessings. Obedient faith brings the enjoyment of God's blessing. It's always that way, brother. Listen, if you're miserable this morning, go to the Lord. Go to His presence. Seek His face. Find out where what happened to the joy. And it's very simple. Often, you know, it could be like Jonah. Jonah 
God wants you to do something. I don't want to do it, Lord. You ever been there, Christian brother, sister? No, I, don't, I don't want to witness. I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to deny that. I don't want to. No, 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 Lord. I, you know, having an issue. Well, you're not going to be joyful. You're not going to have the joy. You're not going to have uh, uh, the joy of the Spirit. Okay, joy of the Lord. Until what? You get back and be that perfect. Grace brings Abram to the blessings. Obedient faith brings the enjoyment of God's blessing. Abram earns nothing, receives all by grace, and has to look to God, the object of our faith. You see, um, the idea is, you see, the coming seed is, and, and I like what the Lord Jesus says about Abram. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. You see, it wasn't just a son, it was a savior. You see, the promised seed, and, and Abram had uh, Old Testament faith, and he was looking ahead. All that was wrapped up in, 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 in his faith. faith. Last thing here, look at uh, Genesis 17, verse 3. And Abram fell on his face. It says, Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying... Now, let me just show you something here. It's really interesting. From El Shaddai to Elohim. See, God is in the business of revealing himself. He, he wants us to... Uh, in in the, the realization of the promises. You see, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We, he gives us promises, but you see, he also reveals himself so he will uh, work for us. And he's almighty, sufficient. You see... Um, El Shaddai, in the beginning, God was about to display His power in making nature subservient to grace. I'm going to open up your womb, Sarah. I'm going to be able to change uh, Abram. I'm going to change you. The resurrection power. I'm going to give you a new name. All that points to that, okay? Part of the covenant. But see, uh, as uh, there in verse 3, Elohim is mentioned. The Creator God is about to do a creative work in enabling Sarah to bring forth. Now think of that for a minute. The response is so great. It says, Abram fell on his face. That's worship. That's uh, submission. That's gratitude. You see, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And dear ones, listen. Abraham's faith is no different from your faith this morning. It's resurrection faith. It's the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith. You see, it's, it's not, you see, our, we can have weak faith, strong faith, but you see, still, it's still overcoming faith. It's still dynamic faith. Because why? It's a gift from God, and God, Holy Spirit, has worked it in our hearts. And what does He do? He feeds it as a sense, He builds it up. Dear ones, I encourage you, take out the promises of God that you're holding on to. Maybe you have it on your refrigerator or your monitor, or, or you have a little notepad and you have those promises and you've been praying and you say, Lord, I, I've, been, I've been praying, I've been asking, I've been waiting. Lord, when are you going to fulfill these things? And the first thing we have to do, brethren, is to believe that God is well able. Al Shaddai. Elohim. Elohim. Let me conclude this way. There's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. There's a time to wait in faith upon the promises of God. And there's a time for God to arise and fulfill His promises. Now, I was thinking about this all this week, studying through this. Do we have any problem thinking that, you know, God Jehovah, He, he, he makes good promises? Anyone here says, think that He can't fulfill His promises? We would all shake our head. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can. And then we go to Al Shaddai. It, it, does God have his lack of power? Can't fulfill the promise because he doesn't have enough power? We would all say, no, he has he's infinite power. He's almighty God. So what's the problem? When? When, Lord? 
Isn't that what Abram had to face? So he succumbed to plan A, he succumbed to plan B, he succumbed to plan C. You see, he, he fainted, he, he was losing heart. And, and the idea of this word fainting, yeah, look at Galatians 6, 9 as I close here. Notice what it says there, Galatians 6, 9. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You see, this doesn't only give us a, 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 a promise of, I think, of harvest of souls, but for every promise in the book. Every promise in the book. You see, when I considered Abram, 13 years wasted, it, was, I think, it looks like he fainted. It looks like he was wavering. It looks like unbelief was taking over faith. Carnal reasoning taking over the replacement of the spiritual. The word there for, in Galatians 6, 9, if you faint not, the word faint comes from a word, root word that means to relax, to loose. You see, um, the Lord says in his second coming, but and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat and beat the men's servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. You see, uh, uh, where is the promise of, of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. You know, when God are you going to fulfill the promises? See, our hope is that God is faithful, number one. Number two, that God is Al Shaddai. He's all God, God Almighty. And here's the hard part. His timetable is best. We must remain faithful and, and all around us he's calling us to be faithful. See, he gives us a promise and it says, all the, the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. But it also says this, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see, God said to Abram, Abram, I am the Almighty God. There's the promises. I'm going to re you're going to re realize the promises. Isaac is coming. Sarah is going to have a new womb. Abram, you're going to be able to produce all the promises I've given to, to you. Abram, I'm going to fulfill. And then the second thing is this. Abram, you have to what? Walk before me and be thou perfect. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see, it's, it's great to say I have a good conscience, and I'm waiting on God, and I believe His promises, and God's well able to perform His promises, and just sit there and say, you know, in a sense, I'm waiting on God. I know God can do this. I know God, this is His promise. You see, dear ones, we have, still have to walk in faith. And I, I just pray that it's not because of our sins, our fainting, our relaxing. You see, we're, we're, we're willing to, to uh, you know, take some years off, relax, play with Ishmael. You see, we relax the promises. The promises are slipping through our fingers. We're fainting. We're failing in prayer. You know, we need, we need God to revive us just so we can be revived. How about that? You think of that? We need, you know, revival prayer or seeing souls saved or seeing victory in one's life over sin. You see, we need, we need the Lord to revive us and come draw nigh. And, and, and the first thing we have to do is this, brother. We have to lay hold of the promises of God and, and put the promises of God into, in a sense, before God. Here, Lord, I, here's a promise again. When are you going to fulfill it? And I hope with a good conscience I can say myself, Lord, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Do it for your glory and honor.
Father, thank you for your mercy. Lord, we, we, we see uh, at a particular time you, you revealed uh, yourself as Al Shaddai, the Almighty One. And that's what exactly what Abram needed in Sarah. Holy Father, as you walk, as you uh, speak to us, as the Lord Jesus walks in the midst of our candlestick, Father, you know exactly what we need. You've given us promises. We know that you are faithful, you're true. We know you're all powerful. So Lord, we come down to, Lord, don't let us faint. Don't let us grow weary in well-doing. Though you tarry long with us, give us grace, stir us up for importunity to come before your throne. And Lord, may we examine our hearts. May we have a good conscience that you would be glorified and honored in the answering of our prayers. For Jesus' sake and in his name.